To help you understand why Docker and microservices often get talked about together as if they were the same thing, I want to take a little bit to talk about why Docker is the perfect fit for microservices. So let's start by looking at production and then local advantages. First off, there's some production advantages that are huge. One, containers can build very quickly and start nearly instantly. Also, you can create and scale services without adding more servers. Once your infrastructure is in place, all it takes to add a new service is simply run more containers across that infrastructure. And containerized apps also make creating new or one-off environments very easy. Simply spin up some really dumb servers that have Docker on that and run as many containers, any versions of containers as you want. If you want to make an environment just for a specific test case, you can easily spin that environment up, run things across it, spin that environment down. You could also run a complete pseudo environment on your production infrastructure. Simply run different versions of different containers and link them all together. Also, provisioning new services is extremely simple. As you've seen, here's what a Node.js Docker file tends to look like. That's about as complicated as it tends to get. You may have five or 10 more lines, but it's rarely any bigger than that. If you're using a compiled language such as Golang, it can actually get drastically simpler. Here's a Golang Docker file. You start from scratch, add your binary, and run your binary. That's extremely simple, and as you can imagine, it builds very quickly. And then here's one of the most complex ones. This would be a PHP Nginx Docker file, and it's still really not that bad. 44 lines of code, extremely simple to read and understand what's going on if you know server administration at all. And it's just easy to provision a complete image for running a PHP environment. So that's about as complicated as that gets. Let's look at some local development advantages. First off, it's very easy to run many services locally on your own local Docker virtual machine. It's easy to run 5, 10, 50, or 100 services all at the same time. Now, if you wanted to do this with virtual machines, such as Vagrant or something like that, it doesn't really work very well for microservices because it's really hard and painful for your local development machine to run a hundred different things at once. You basically have to go one of two directions. You either underpower your virtual machines so you can actually afford to run them all, which gives you a really bad idea of how it will all work when you're on production, or you have to adequately power those machines, leaving your local development machine highly taxed and possibly running very poorly. Whereas again, with Docker, simply it's easy to run many, many services. Also, running service dependencies is very seamless. Docker Compose makes it easy for each service to require as few or as many support services as it wants with no overhead. As you can see, here's a Docker file that has our web instance easily depending on Postgres and Redis. If the next service I work on doesn't require these, I can easily stop all of these services and start the ones required to work on another service. Also, if I add any other services that were dependencies that are maybe services my company owns, I could easily add 5, 10, or 50 supporting services to this Docker Compose file. While good microservices design means you don't often have to run any supporting microservices, you're still capable and able to do it very simply. You also have fewer boundaries when you're using Docker with microservices. You can use multiple languages, frameworks, and databases for one, so you have a truly polyglot setup should you desire. If you have an expensive computational service, you can use a more low-level language, whereas if you have other services that don't require that low-level power, you can use something more scripted. You can choose the correct language, the correct database, the correct framework for each piece of your application. You can also connect multiple cloud providers to the same overlay network. You could have AWS servers side-by-side -side with DigitalOcean servers, and it's not difficult to do because overlay networking allows them all to communicate you're really just not locked down as much to having to have everything run in exactly the same place. It's also really easy to run one-off support services. Say you're building a microservice and it would really benefit from having Kafka running alongside of it. If you weren't running Docker, you'd have to provision a Kafka server, get Kafka up and running, and then connect that to the service you're building that wants to use Kafka. Whereas with the Docker Compose file, as you saw earlier, it's simple, just run Kafka and connect the two. And then when you're ready for production, just run a Kafka container and connect the two. It's about the same way. So there you have it. There's some quick wins on why Docker is really the perfect fit for microservices. There's a lot of production as well as local development advantages for it. And if you're doing microservices, it really should be your default tool of choice.